Hi Anna, um, I'm Molly, I'm 27 and I live in South West London. Um, I don't really know where to start properly. Um, I've had a lot of thoughts consuming my head for the past few months, um, but I've seen all the other videos that people have been sending in and I just felt inspired to send in my own video, so here we are. Um, I have posted some notes because um, I tried doing video yesterday and I rambled on for God knows how long. Um, I think a good, good place really for me to start and the reason I am uh, sending in this video is that I'm single. Um, I have always envisioned having children in my life um, up until the past few months and now I'm sort of questioning whether or not I actually do ever want children and that's because I personally don't know whether or not I want to bring child into the world now given everything that's going on and um, yes I, I just wouldn't want children to be growing up in this world not as it is now um, um, because in my opinion at the moment humans treating other humans as biohazards um, and it's not everyone feeling that way but I think in general at the moment people are not viewing people as humans and people are keeping their distance from each other um, and it's just incredibly sad if I'm honest um, and I just think as a society there's a complete and utter divide at the moment which is getting um, greater by the day um, it's isolating people and it all obviously started um, kind of when COVID-19 emerged and it's been very interesting the past few months to, to watch it all uh, kind of unfold um, kind of when the, the lockdown like initially happened and when COVID-19 sort of kind of got like, serious in this country and um, everything was locked down um, I was quite skeptical to be honest um, just my gut told me that something else was going on um, I just just felt very uneasy from the start I, I can't tell you why I felt like that but just I just felt I kind of felt very alone at the beginning because everyone else seemed to think differently to me um, and it's obviously only recently it's emerged that there are lots of other people out there who feel the same way that I do which is really nice to know um, but yes, I, I've never been under the impression that I believe that COVID-19 exists. It's not that I don't think the virus exists, because I do. Um, but I just think that it's been completely and utterly over-exaggerated. Um, I think all the numbers have been inflated. Um, I think that there's been a hell of a lot of scaremongering. Um, all the fear has been built up. And I think initially, maybe we were right to be cautious. We didn't, we didn't know much about the virus, but I think it's quite clear after a while that we didn't need to be in this lockdown um as strongly as it, as it was um and i think judging by other countries different approaches i think yeah i think it became sort of quite clear in my mind that the virus has been deadly to some people but for the majority actually i think it has been no worse than maybe a bad flu um and i just think that a lot of it is to do with control and scaring society um and i think like for me when i really really sort of began to question everything was obviously as our rights were kind of taken away from the beginning in terms of we weren't able to see loved ones um we we're obviously only allowed out for essentials businesses were closed down like society is pretty much shut down um i remember the time when we actually were told off for sitting on a park bench um believe it or not I mean it, it's crazy even to think that, that was only a few months ago that yep yeah, literally if you sat down anywhere outside the police could come up to you and tell you that you were doing something wrong um I mean kind of like the list goes on in terms of what's been t taken away from us I mean I think as a single person myself um I feel like my sexual rights were taken away which I a lot of people might think it's only it's only sex or god you can go without sex for like a couple of months well I, at the time, during lockdown, was dating someone and we chose obviously not to move in together. It was too early on in our relationship for that. But then sort of my sexual rights were taken away because it then became illegal that for you to have intimacy and to have sexual relations with anyone sort of outside of your household, household because you couldn't see anyone. Um, so for me, that was definitely an infringement on my liberty. And I think someone maybe in a relationship or who's married maybe obviously won't understand the way that I was kind of feeling um, in terms of my sort of sexual liberties. 
Um, and I think like for me, it, that was a, a massive part of it was I, I just felt that a lot of my human rights in terms of relationships were taken away as I'm sure that many other people are really out there. Um, and I think now how many, four months in, um, the scaremongering and the fear within society is it's, it's still there, it's prevalent. And um, I have friends who won't go into restaurants and are scared to go into sort of any really indoor environment with people because they are so still so terrified that this virus exists. And these are um, friends who are the same age as me, 27, they're fit, they're healthy, um, and yet they've been so sort of terrified and it's been so drilled into them that there is this pandemic, this deadly virus out there, that everything has been blown out in proportion and it seems like all, like all other risks don't matter anymore. Um, and yes, this is very interesting because I'm pretty much the only one of my friends who has this view and I now know a lot of people actually feel similar to me but it is, it is very interesting to see that most of these people who agree with me seem to be older, um, which it surprises me considering I feel like it's our future children here that are at stake because most of my friends don't have children yet and I kind of I can't quite understand how they are so complicit and everything because this is their futures and their future children's lives at stake um, and I think for me especially it's whether or not I will have children in the future um, at all I think uh, obviously that's kind of why I've been sending in this video um so yeah i think I think for me um again it's i think all the like, scaremongering and the fear within society has basically made each other humanity scared of other people so people won't hug and embrace each other anymore like now it's you don't know whether or not you can hug someone um and i'm i'm a big i'm a big hugger and i like to hug my friends and show show my feelings and I think it's really, really important that like we have that intimacy with other humans, um, and we we're losing it. <laughs> like we're completely and utterly losing um, our the relationships with each other in the same way. Because as much as you can communicate um, verbally, it's not just like relationships, especially obviously um, with like partners it's more than just like verbal it's all about how you express your feelings with each other and we're losing it so now I find it hard to embrace my friends because they don't want me to get near them um which I think is incredibly sad um so yeah so they're some of them are just scared to go indoors and to public transport and then um obviously there was the introduction of the masks and obviously that started off with um public transport and is now in was then shops and then everywhere pretty much indoors um and again I I just think that the full impact of that dawned on me I think as soon as public transport was made mandatory I really really began to feel like this was it was all about control um because I think well the medical aspects I think of masks are questionable considering most masks that people are wearing actually do not, don't do anything and when people are wearing them they're not wearing them properly and people are putting them away putting them into their bags um they're dirty um so quite frankly it's not so much the fact that we're being made to wear masks it's it, i don't i don't mind people wearing masks if they want to wear one they can wear one but it, in my opinion it should be a choice because i think that this is where i've seen the major division within society is when the masks came in it was because all of a sudden you have people obeying these rules because they feel like either they want to um, because they they feel like it's their moral duty I think in, but in other cases in a lot of the cases it's because they're simply being told they have to do that most of the people I know did not wear masks in shops and in public transport until they were told they had to and I think that's the difference is people are now too scared not to go along with the rules and not to to comply with everything um, and I have a friend who is autistic and um, I think having seen the impact that it has had on him, um, I think it's been outrageous because he will get abuse and um, suffer intimidation every single day when he's going out and he has to commute into work every day, he goes on public transport because he has to, he goes into these shops and it's not right that we're creating a complete division here and we're segregating, isolating individuals for the pure fact that they can't wear a mask or actually 
don't want to wear masks for their own reasons and it should be about personal choice. Um, it, it's quite frankly, as, as my mum actually said the other day and I think she said, said it really well, she said, I don't see people smile anymore, I don't see people laugh anymore, she was I don't see people's expressions. Um, and you need to be able to see those to again communicate non-verbally. Um, you can tell how someone's feeling if they're smiling or you can tell if they're sad or if they're angry frustrated you can tell all this from someone's face all of a sudden you're sort of you're covering up all these expressions um and i think it's very very dehumanizing um and some people say oh but it's it's just a mask well i think for me it's well where where does it stop <laughs> when does just mask become something else um and i think yes i think the mental health benefits of it all i think is it, it's, it's really scary because mental health has just been put to one side. Um, mental health doesn't matter anymore because it's all about coronavirus. And actually saying that it's about, it's about coronavirus only in terms of anything health related. Cancers, heart diseases, other, any, any other deaths have been put to one side and it's all about coronavirus now. And it's, it's just not right. Um, so I think, yeah, I think I've definitely gone on for quite a while. Um, I apologise for, again, I think rambling. Um, I hope that I made some sort of sense. I think I'm just very, very, very worried in general for the future. Um, I think especially just because everyone seems to be complying with it. That's my age. And I think this is what I don't quite understand, um, is how not many people my age are questioning the narrative when it is their futures and their future children's lives which are in real jeopardy because um just like to finish finish off um when i was younger and growing up my family we used to take a lot of home recordings so we would, we would go on holidays and christmases and everything and when i was younger we would have the video camera on just to record everything growing up um and i think about what it would be like if I was using the video camera now and it was my children in like sort of a few years time and how different it would be and there may not be all these memories being made of children hugging other children and people embracing each other um, and not being able to see my children's expressions in these videos because they're having to be covered up by a mask because it seems like it's heading that way as well um, and that's an, an abysmal thought um, in all honesty, that the childhood that I grew up with potentially won't be the same childhood that my future children may have. Um, and I think it's really, really scary because if we're not careful, that is the way it's gonna, gonna head, is into, into, yeah, into something very, very scary. Um, yeah, but anyway, thank you, Anna, for allowing everyone to share their opinions. Um, and yeah, I think good luck. And I think everyone needs, everyone, if they're thinking about sending in a video should, because the more that people speak out about this, I think the more that will happen and I think the more support we will have. Um, so thank you, Anna, and speak to you soon. Bye.